Well, good morning everybody. It is a quiet morning here in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. My name is Ben and this is Mo Time. We are back for another lawn renovation and again, another Zoysia lawn you can see behind me. So we're gonna be leveling this one out today. Um, but yeah, first things first, we're gonna be scalping as always and then going through with our scarifier, as you saw, and go through it and pull up as much rubbish as we can. Then we'll get into um, oh, probably not corrading this one, it doesn't need it, it's not that old of a lawn and there's not really any compaction on, on this one either so we won't worry about core aerating uh, and then we'll go on to top dressing and fertilising but anyway, first things first, I'm just going to go through and hand weed, there's a few weeds throughout the lawn now if you're preparing for a lawn renovation you really want to get on top of your weeds first I mean look, if you don't, don't worry, you can always treat them um, part, you know, post reno or after the reno, um, but if you can, try and treat them and pull out as many as you can before you get into the reno. But anyway, sadly, it is a very quiet neighborhood, and I'm about to crack off with the still here and make a lot of racket. So sorry to everybody in the neighborhood. Um, but yeah, let's pull some weeds out and then we'll get into scalping this lawn down and getting it ready for a scarify. All right, let's get into it. Now, there was some creeping oxalis over in the corner there, um, and if you know what that is, I'll put a picture up on the screen of creeping oxalis. Very, very, very common lawn weed here in Brisbane. Uh, but yeah, if you know what it is, it is not easy to pull out by hand, so we'll have to treat that post reno when it comes back. But hopefully, maybe if we scarify it, it might not come back. We'll see how we go. But anyway, can't pull that out, so we'll leave that till after the renovation. But anyway, let's get into scalping down the edges first, which is what I like to do, and then get into scalping the lawn down and then into scarifying. All right, time to fire up the whipper. Let's get into it.
right, my friends, scalping is done. Now, I'll just answer the question, why do you scalp a lawn? Um, I don't think I answered that in the other renovation videos I did. Um, there's a few reasons to scalp a lawn. Now, one, if you don't own a scarifier or anything like that, then it's a way of removing thatch out of your lawn. Um, you know, the mower will try and pick up any loose debris, um, you know, or a good way to do it is mow down fairly low and then go through with the rake and give it a good hard rake. Now that's a tough slog, um, especially if you've got a decent area, then I definitely would recommend just hiring a scarifier because you'll have sore arms and you'll be there for hours. But if you don't, just use a rake, a metal one if you have one, and just rake it really tough and that'll get the thatch out of there as much as possible. And then run back over with the mower a bit of a lower setting and that'll pick it all up. So yeah, so one, scarifying, scarifying, um, scalping can help pick up thatch. Um, number two, it basically cuts your lawn right down and stimulates new regrowth. Uh, that's why it's like a good time in spring to do your scalping before the growth season kicks in and that'll help um, spring new growth uh, onto the plant and make it nice and healthy. The third reason and probably one of the big ones why people do it apart from to move thatch uh, well, one, you want to open up the canopy because if you are coming through with a verticutter or a scarifier or some sort of machine that needs to get down into the canopy or pick up the thatch or a, or a scarifier, um, then mowing the grass blades down opens up the canopy so you can get in with your scarifier or dethatcher and run it through and pick up all that thatch. Um, and then the other reason, uh, which is probably a main one why people do it, is to show you your high and low spots. So I'll just take you for a quick walk here, see what I mean. So, yeah, so high and low spots. So down this side here, you can see, so if your mower um, scalps down really low, then you've hit a high spot. You can see right next to it, there is greenery still through there. And that means it's a low spot because it's sitting low when the mower went over it it's not cutting because there's the dip there. So through this section, you can sort of see there's a big dip here as well. So scalping shows you your high and your low spots. So that's the other reason why you scalp. And why that's important is because when you come to top dress, then you know where your low spots are. Especially this is really important if you use a cylinder or reel mower, because you need to keep that, you need to have that nice and flat to get that clean cut and not scalp and have brown patches all over your lawn. So it's really important to scalp so you see your high and low spots. So yeah, that's the other reason why you scalp your lawn, to show up your lawn, show up your lawn, show up your low and high spots. But anyway, if you've got any more uh, educational things to chuck in regarding scalping, by all means, put them in the comments below for everyone to read and see. And for me, we're all on this journey learning together about lawns and especially renovations of lawns. But anyway, that's scalping. I'm going to give it a light tickle with the scarifier. It's not too thatchy, this zoysia lawn, because um, it's not furted, over furted, and also it's not that old. Um, so yeah, we're going to give it a little tickle with the scarifier just to pick up any that's there. The mower did a good job of it. Um, and then we'll move on to top dress and fertilizing, or fertilizing and top dress, whatever which way you like to do it. But anyway, let's keep going. All right, before I get into scarifying, Cox Scarifier. I did a review on it on the channel. If you want to go back on to the videos, you can see it there, or I'll leave it up in the description up here. Just click on one of them. If you're after a Scarifier that's inexpensive, I think I paid around 11 or 1200 bucks for it, um, but it's been great for what I do. Uh, been absolutely fantastic, done the job. But yeah, that's it. Go check out the review. Leave a like on it if you enjoyed it. But yeah, anyway, let's get into Scarifying. Just like all you want 
done with the scarifying. And of course, as you saw, went over and picked up the thatch that we pulled out of there. And as you can see, the canopy is way more open now, which is really what you want. You want to be able to see dirt on Zilizia. Um, but I often get asked, how low do you scalp on Zoysia? And it really comes down to the health of the lawn. Um, like the other Zoysia renovation I did was just absolutely chock, it was full of thatch and it wasn't in good health. So I didn't go down too low on that one just to aid in recovery. Um, but this one's pretty good. And it's not that old, like I mentioned, and it's been watered regularly. So it'll bounce back pretty well. Now bear that in mind, Zoysia is a slower repairer than like your Cooch or Bermuda, if you're in America and other places, um, Cooch and your Buffalo, they repair faster than Zoysia, so you just gotta be a bit more gentle. But you know, if you're doing this for the first time at home, then it's a learning experience. Just go down as low as you're comfortable and safe to think, and then do your reno, make sure you get all the thatch out of there, and then you'll learn quickly, oh, okay, I could have gone down lower. So next season, next year, or whenever you're doing a reno next, um, you know, you know you can go down a bit lower but it all comes down to the health of the lawn if your lawn zoysia lawn is not that healthy then i wouldn't go down super low like that to the dirt um, but if it is then yeah you can go down to that and just wait patiently for it to come back but anyway that's it today i've got to move on to hedge some lily pillies and mow lawn another client's place so we'll see you all tomorrow for the second stage of the renovation on this zoysia lawn but anyway see you soon All right, good morning everyone, Dak here, back, Dak, Dak here, back here for day two of the Zoysia lawn renovation. You can see behind me, we're here today to spread some fertilizer out and spread some top dress sand out. So that's the next uh, finishing process in the Zoysia renovation. But anyway, um, now I'll have a, show you a quick look at the sand. Um, like I mentioned, we're not core aerating because this isn't a very old lawn, it doesn't require it. Um, now we're going with a sand blend on this one as you can see here so this is called washed um, double washed pit sand is what this one's called which is what i use when i'm using a sand for um, top dressing now washed um, means basically it's been cleaned out as much as possible to get any um, rocks or any anything that isn't sand out of there um, and stuff so yeah but yeah, double washed pit sand this is called. This is my lawn level rake. I did a video recently on lawn level rakes just to provide a bit of education that uh, there are different types of lawn level rakes and just to make sure you get the right one for what you're doing. This one is from David Golf. Um, but yeah, go back on the channel and you can, um, go back on the channel and you can see my video on lawn level rakes. Um, and, and you know, getting the right one for you. Where I got mine, I absolutely love mine. Mine's been great um, so far, no issues with it, been good. I paid a few dollary dues for it, but you know, if you want good equipment, you gotta outlay the money. So anyway, but anyway, that's what I'm using today. We're using sand for this job. As you would have seen in other jobs, I don't always use sand. Sometimes I use a sandy loam, but yeah, this one doesn't need that. So we'll go through, fill in the low and high spots, fill in the low spots, don't fill in high spots, fill in low spots. Um, and get into it but yeah that's it it's a beautiful day it's meant to be about 26 to 28 all week here in brisbane i absolutely love it here I feel sorry for you guys down in melbourne and all that sort of areas that get the freezing get the rain all that sort of stuff no thanks keep it all down there but anyway let's get stuck into the finishing parts of this zoysia lawn renovation All right, I'll just quickly talk about something, how I throw my top dress out. Now, you might think, yeah, we know how to throw it out. Just get it on the shovel and flick the wrist. But what I do is I throw my sand out, or throw my top dress out exactly the way I mow a lawn. So I do the edges first. And the reason for that is 
Hang on, let me put the camera down here. Okay, let me demonstrate. So I've got some sand on my shovel. We've got our edge that runs along there. I'm gonna throw straight at the edge, okay? Hang on. Let me start again. So I'm gonna throw, you can see our garden edging along here. I'm gonna throw straight at the edge to start with. Okay, so if you see, sometimes if you throw straight at an edge, you'll get like these gaps. So to prevent from trying to get a more even spread of your throw, I always do like a trim pass or a trim pass on mowing the lawn. So do your edges first, go around the edges and then make your way through. So that way you're getting a more even spread of soil. So if you come along to the edge and throw along the edge, then you'll get a more even spread of your top dress, like so. All right, kind of a silly thing. It's just what I do, again, it's just what I do. You don't have to do that. But these are just little tips and tricks. But now you can see, uh, hang on. Now you can see here, is where I threw into the edge, and here is where I threw along the edge. Really simple, but look, I'm a bit fussy like that, so if you're a fuss pot like me, and like to do things to the best and accuracy as possible, then I throw along my garden edging, or whatever is next to your lawn. I go along like a trim pass, and then that way it makes it easier to then throw in from the edge. You've covered all your edge area a little more evenly. If not, again, that's just me, that's what I do. You do whatever you do, whatever suits you at home. But anyway, just thought I'd provide that little tip, it might help you out at home. All right, let's keep going. This is Champion Lawn and Greens Fertilizer um, from Plant Doctor. If you don't know, you can use Motime 10 at the checkout at Plant Doctor and get 10% off any product on their website. So everyone loves a good saving. But anyway, that's it. There you go. NPK of 16, one and nine and 3% of iron. So really good solid stuff. Now this is a greens fertilizer. So the prill size is really, really small but a good all-round fertilizer to use on any turf variety at all. Um, so yeah, definitely recommend this stuff. Absolutely fantastic. But yeah, go check it out. There's your prill size, one to two mil. Um, but yeah, go and check it out, give it a go, um, and make sure you go and follow Plant Doctor on their website. And yeah, like I said, use Motime 10 at the checkout to get a discount. And who doesn't love money off an item? But anyway, let's put some fert down. Let's get into the watering and we are done. Everybody, 
well that's a wrap on the Zoysia lawn renovation. I hope you're at least able to get a little bit of education or a lot of education out of that Zoysia lawn renovation. And I hope it gives you a little bit of encouragement to get out and have a go at doing a reno on your lawn or your client's lawn, whatever you're doing. Uh, your renovations but yeah as always if you have any questions regarding you know equipment you see in videos or even uh, more questions regarding renovations please put it in the comments below I'll get back to you as soon as I can work and renovations are flat out at the moment so I'm just doing big days and all that sort of stuff and that kind of explains why I'm shooting the end of this video in the Motime shed because I shot the ending of the video at the client's place and I still had the camera in time-lapse mode so that was a bit of a face palm moment so hence why I'm shooting it here. Long days in the heat physically do eventually get to the brain so bear that in mind but anyway like I said yeah any questions put them in the comments below and uh, if you haven't subscribed already please help Mo Time out by subscribing and hitting the like button on the video if you enjoy the videos on the Mo Time channel there are heaps of them so jump back on the channel and go check them all out there might be something there for you but anyway it is now Friday the afternoon I'm done for the day I'm gonna try and chill out I'm gonna try and get some time in my own property on the weekend because I'm pretty much ready to rock and roll with my renovation next week on my own so well to Buffalo Backyard so that'll be happening very soon and of course I'll be filming that for the channel but anyway fantastic weather here in Brisbane absolutely loving it I hope you're doing well mentally and physically as always we'll see you all in the next video oh, yeah.